rhymes with Periana Mande. Okay, so in today's video, we're going to be taking a look at one of the channel favorites, Ariana Grande. And she really is one of my favorites, I've got to say. I mean, what is not to love about Ariana Grande and those soft, Asiatic features? Yes, Ariana is about two years in now to what I have called her geisha phase. And I think I speak for everyone when I say I love everything about it. I love her cute little playful butter wouldn't melt soulful gaze. I love the way her mouth is almost permanently slightly ajar. Suggestive of her 31 year old youthful innocence. Her virginal dreaminess. A childlike naivete like a 31 year old infant rabbit kitten. Hoppity hopping around the meadow without a care in the world. But, oh no, what's that, Ariana? What's that creeping up on you? It's a stoat! No, not really, Ariana. There's no giant weasel-like creature actually creeping up on you. And don't any of you smart Alex in the comments call me a giant weasel. I'm not a weasel. But anyway, no, uh, the stoat, actually, Ariana, was a metaphor for reality. The stoat was a metaphor. So, meh. Who's Daniel Boland? Daniel Bolin, this is a heavy hitter. Do you guys know who this is? Okay, so for those of you who don't know, Ariana Grande has been involved in a little bit of drama with the Queen of Halloween, Elvira, also known as actress Cassandra Peterson. Now, initially, I thought that this story was just a load of BS, and I couldn't be arsed with it. And I thought, let's just leave it to the professional drama queens of YouTube. But then I looked into it a little bit more, and I've got to say, this whole incident really sums up for me what I've always felt about Ariana Grande. So, basically, all that happened is, about ten days ago, Cassandra Peterson, Elvira, was at a scary film festival, and she was doing a Q&A with some of the fans on stage, and somebody asked her for an anecdote about a time a celebrity had been rude to her, or something like that, and Elvira told the story about... Ariana Grande going to one of hers, one of Alvira's events a few years ago and saying how she got free tickets for about 20 of her friends and family and got them all to come backstage and meet Elvira and take photos with her. And when Elvira asked Ariana Grande to take a quick photo with her, she basically said no, that she couldn't do that. And then she left very quickly. Oh, yeah, we didn't have any donuts for her back. No, I'll, I'll say no, I'll tell you briefly why she went. Okay, she came and she brought 20 guests. She, she wanted 20, 21 tickets. We're like, okay. And we gave her the tickets and she comes backstage and she asked if I could take pictures with all of her friends and relatives she brought. I take a picture with every single one of them. I sign autographs for every single one of them. Then I say to her, could we take a photo together? She goes, no, nah, I don't really do that. <laughs> I mean, come on, okay? And then she left before my show started. All her relatives stayed. All her relatives stayed, and she took off. Okay, what? I'll try. Just saying. She's playing the wrong witch. So like I said, initially it seemed like a bit of a non-story, right? It would be completely reasonable for fans of Elvira and people who are not particularly fond of Ariana Grande, like myself, uh, to come out and say, yeah, typical snooty, uh, too big for her own boots behavior from Ariana Grande, right? And at the same time, it would be, I guess, reasonable for Ariana Grande fans to give her yet another pass for her shitty behavior. But I think in this case, more than in others, it would be reasonable for them to say, oh, Ariana Grande didn't want to take a photo with someone a few years ago. Big whoop. Why bring it up now? Huh? Why bring it up now? What do you mean? But then Ariana decided to respond to Elvira in true Ariana Grande style. What, by direct uh, private message? No. What is she, some kind of thoughtless shite hawk? That's not Ariana's style. Ariana is more like a flying squirrel 
gliding through the uh, Florida forests by night, possibly in search of somebody else's husband. We don't know. Be that as it may, no. Uh, how did uh, Ariana respond to Elvira? Like any other mature 31-year-old woman would do, by leaving a public comment on the video on Instagram. I'm so disheartened to see this. Before you ask, no, that is me reading the comment. It's not actually Ariana Grande, I know. <laughs> I actually don't even remember getting the chance to meet you because I had an anxiety attack and to my memory left before the rest of my family. This was around seven years ago and at the time I was really not great with being in public crowds or loud places. So everybody read that response and immediately went, oh, she had an anxiety attack. She can't even remember what happened. And it was about seven years ago. <gasps> oh, we've got to back off. We've got to leave her alone. It was around seven years ago. You know what happened seven years ago to Ariana Grande, right? Pull the other one, sausage. How about new? So clearly Ariana here is blaming her behavior, her not wanting to take a photo with Elvira, on the fact that she was suffering from uh, trauma, right? That she was having a panic attack. She's saying it without saying it, that it's basically the fault of uh, the Manchester bombing thing that happened. And uh, that just divided people even further, because of course all of Ariana Grande's friends thought that that sounds quite plausible, that you might sort of have a panic attack after you've seen, you know, that happen to a loads of kids at a concert, that's absolutely plausible. But then there were a load of other people who hate Ariana Grande, who of course said, no, this happened before the Manchester bombing. They started saying, without any evidence in my opinion, that it happened in 2015 or 2016. Uh, the only evidence I've been able to find is a photo of Ariana Grande's brother, Frankie, uh, with Elvira, and this is in October of 2017, so a few months after the Manchester bombing, which would make sense, therefore. However, I don't know if it's just me, maybe I'm crazy, but uh, I find it a little bit cynical, knowing that you've got this many fans to hint at the fact that the reason you didn't want to take a photo with Elvira was because of all of those dead kids. You know? I, I mean, it could be genuine, and I, I get it. She's been called out by Cassandra Peterson, by Elvira there, and uh, she wants to respond. But I just don't think that that's appropriate. You could say, look, I was, I was having a bad day. I don't really remember it. I'm sorry if I behaved in a... To suggest that it's in some way linked to the Manchester bombing, which is what she's doing, right? She's not explicitly doing it, but we all know that's what she's doing. Uh, I, I don't know. I, I find that a bit cynical. I mean, it's just the way she subtly, at the beginning of her comment here, suggests that Elvira is remembering it wrong, or lying, possibly, saying that she doesn't even recall having met Elvira. And then uh, she puts in brackets the thing about it having been seven years ago, you know, at a time when I was really not great with being in public crowds and loud places, right? Three dots, dot, 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 you know, think about it. Seven years ago, what happened to me? But then to me, the comment just goes from bad to worse. It just gets more and more passive aggressive as it goes on. But if I'm misremembering the moment, I sincerely apologize for offending you so. <laughs> That's triggering. I, I, I don't know about the rest of you, but I have received in my time a few text messages and emails, let me tell you, with that kind of tone. You know, of a, well, here's my long rambling excuse, but I don't know, maybe it's me, maybe I'm crazy, maybe I'm just misremembering everything. If so, I sincerely apologize. What does that even mean? I, I, I don't understand. This is the thing I can't stand when people are angry, but they pretend not to be, right? It's like, you you don't think you're misremembering it. You're clearly saying, you're making an excuse for yourself. You're saying, you don't remember meeting Elvira. You were having a panic attack. And this was at the time, shortly after the Manchester event, right? So you don't think you're misremembering it. You're angry that she's suggesting that you should have been nicer to her. And you should say, look, I'm sorry, I was in a bad place. I don't think I need to make excuses for myself. And maybe it's a misunderstanding. You cannot go, well, then maybe I'm just misremembering it all. I don't know. God knows. Maybe that never even happened. <laughs> Thank you for being so nice to my mom. She told me how lovely you were. She might have different feelings about that now, but I'll talk to her. Clearly, we all have our days. My mom really loved you. That's all changed now, though. But I'll talk to her. We all have our bad days. What the fuck? What in fuck's name? 
is this? Send in love always. You'll always be our queen of Halloween. Yeah, I fucking doubt it. Look, I think I'm just not a big fan of Ariana's uh, cutesy patootsy Asian persona that she's uh, working on lately. And, uh, you know, I almost preferred it when she was pretending to be black. Kill me, get your ass in here. Kill me, get your ass in here. <laughs> Come on, girl. It was certainly a lot funnier. <laughs> but uh, that is a tough persona to keep up. I think really the whole time her little uh, dainty Japanese uh, geisha was fighting to get out. Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, like with the thank you next hook, that's like one of my favorite stories is um, Victoria, like I was like obsessed with the chords. Like everyone was like, okay, this is like something. Let's like stay here until we get it. Striving to break through that toughened urban exterior. That hip-hop carapace could only withstand so many uh, samurai slashes. Look, as ever here on The Daniel Boland Show, I don't got the answers for nothing, okay? Uh, <laughs> if you're coming here looking for advice or life coaching, go somewhere else. Um, I am not interested in whether things are right or wrong. Okay, I'm only interested in people's motives, right? I don't care if uh, Ariana Grande is actually technically right here or technically wrong. It's it's the mannerisms, it's the behavior, it's the words that people use that really bother me. Because all of these little Miss Personality Disorders and Misters uh, running around a kind of ruining life for the rest of us. Okay, we have to put up with them We have to pretend like they're not there because they never technically do anything wrong, but they just suck the oxygen out of every room they're in Okay, and uh, <laughs> And uh, we have to sit there like uh, oh, yeah, well, maybe maybe this is an apology. It doesn't feel like an apology I feel like I'm being you know gaslit Okay and I'm bloody sick of it. Get that lamp out my face. Bitch! You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying. Um, I guess that's all I've got to say about this one. Um, I, I think I've said enough. Uh, if you've enjoyed the video, give it a like so that the algorithm, the universe knows what a great time you've had. Let me know what you think about, uh, about mental health and shit in the chat, in the, in the comments. <laughs> Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Why the hell wouldn't you? And join my Patreon. Thank you to everyone who's joined me on Patreon. And uh, you can get some exclusive videos on there and uh, early access to a lot of the videos that get restricted on here. And uh, I guess I'll see you in the next one. Let's uh, have a look at the outro video, shall we? The news and uh, Bob just confirming the ground is now good to see. Oh, you've been joined by a beautiful lady. It's a man, actually, Derek. Who's... Oh, I'm sorry. Just, I've been joined by a beautiful lady. Just remind me of your name, because I completely Matthew forgot. Jones. Matthew Jones. Of course it's Matthew Jones. He's a man.